It's recording. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Event Marketing. And what I'm gonna be doing is a presentation about effective trade show marketing. I've renamed the, the title to effective event marketing. And what it's about, it's about how to use a live event to market your product, service, or cause. And I've got a PDF document that I created a while back. And I'm gonna use that as a the base for going over this. Um, essentially what this is about is when people are exhibiting at trade shows or events, oftentimes they don't have their goals and objectives in line and they, uh, sometimes they come to me and they say, I've done, I tried trade shows and they just don't work. And that's not always the case. I mean, uh, you need to just understand how these trade show things work. So let me share my screen and I will show you the document that I've got out here. There it is, ta-da. So that's what it's called. It's called uh, the 10 key elements of event marketing. So let me spread this out a little bit so you can read it and I will go over it also. So first off, a little bit more, how's that? There we go. The objective. Um, one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make when they start uh, creating their trade show plans is they don't have one common objective. Because sometimes when you're doing a marketing for an event, your objective might be to sell on site point of purchase. And that happens more at like vendor fairs or farmers markets and things like that. Oftentimes not at, at a trade show, it might be just for lead generation. So your objective needs to be clear. Are you just looking for brand recognition? In which case you might want to do a lot of graphics and and uh, sponsor the event so you get a little more recognition out of it? Or is it lead generation? So I'm gonna get also into that more in depth as far as when you're generating the leads because a lot of times people, they, they just um, collect business cards or hand out brochures. And that's not necessarily the most effective use of your time. Um, when I do the Event Planner Expo, it's only four hours. So you've got four hours that you need to talk to these people and find out do they have money and are they your, pro your, your customer? And if they are, when are you gonna do business? So you have to condense that down. My friend Ron Eccles used to, just, used to say, how much money do you have and when are you gonna give it to me? That's the basic essence of it. I know it's kind of abrupt, but it's true. Um, when I do the Event Planner Expo, if someone's exhibiting at the Event Expo, as an example, and they're looking for event planners, one of the first things you do when a person comes up says, hey, how's it going at the show today? Are you the person responsible for planning your events? If they say no, then you might wanna ask them who is the person that is responsible for planning your events. Then you wanna get into the conversation, are you planning anything in the next uh, three to six months? Because if they're planning something you know, six years from now, maybe it's not proper right, right for your business. Uh, maybe it is if you're looking down the road for doing the Olympics or the Super Bowl or something like that. So you need to get more real clear on, on that because a lot of people, one of the biggest mistakes they do is they, they don't have a measurable objective. It's, uh, you're probably familiar with the SMART goals. It's uh, specific, measurable, attainable, um, realistic, and timely. You have to have all that kind of stuff. So let me get into the next element of it. The next part, when you're exhibiting at a show, pre-event promotion, a lot of people don't do that. They just go to the show and they expect the show to work miracles for them. And uh, it's good to actually invite some of your prospects and some of your customers to the show to come and visit. And some people think, oh, I don't wanna be inviting my competitors or my customers there because my competitors will take my customers away. Well, that's not always the case. Um, and the other side of looking at it is, what if your competitor invites your prospect to your customer and you don't? That doesn't make you look so good. So it's good to do a pre-show promotion and do an email or a, a direct mail. And there's been a couple different ways of doing this thing. Right there. there we go, it's highlighted for you. So one of the ways of doing it, um, we have done situations where we sent, like if the if the audience is primarily female, you would send out one earring 
and then tell them to pick up the second earring at your booth. And it's like a, a gift that you give them. Same thing for men's cufflinks, you can do the same thing. And that's an incentive for them to come to your show. Or um, we did an event once for Honeywell. And what we did is we said, this was a small building owners manufacturers association event at the convention center. And Honeywell was the client and they didn't have a big budget. So we just did a 10 by 10 booth at a big show. And then outside, we got permission from the convention center to put up a tent and we did a pig roast and had uh, pork sandwiches out and some games and face painters and magicians and jugglers and stuff happening outside. So when people were walking around outside, they smelled the sandwiches and they came over and says, hey, what are you doing over here? The key was they had to go to the booth to get a ticket to come into the tent. So if you can do that pre-show promotion, invite everybody to you know, complimentary pork sandwiches and fun and games, they have to go to the booth first and get qualified first. So that's one of the things that you can do before, um, before an event. But it's important to do some pre-show promotion rather than, than relying 100% on the producer to produce the people. Um, we'll go into the next element over here. I'm gonna have to make this a little bit smaller here. There we go. Oh, hope, I hope you can see that. I've got a, it's blocking the way for me because on the side, it's got the, my video, my picture. So the marketing message, when you put together your message again, you can create a, like a basic script and your message has to be clear and concise with whatever product, service, or cause that you're marketing and promoting. Um, so as again, as an example of event planners, you want to get real clear with who you're trying to reach. Now we did this, um, this also leads into the pre-show -pre promotion, the previous uh, topic there, that you need to know exactly who you're trying to reach. I had a conversation with, uh, with the USA Inflatables. They were one of the exhibitors at the event expo and they do these bouncy things for the kids. You know, the groups come along and they do have a lot of fun and bounce, the bounce house thing. And they wanted to reach church groups. So your message should be relevant to the church group so that when they come to the show, it resonates with whatever they are saying or whatever they're looking for. Um, so back into the pre-event promotion, what we did with them was when an exhibitor comes into the event expo, what I do is I do a blog post about that company. And then I put that blog post on Facebook and I pay, take a piece of their uh, exhibit fee and put it towards advertising. And I did some marketing campaigns to that blog post directed to church groups. So now when church groups come to the event, they, they know what they're looking for because they saw it in advance and they beeline right to the, uh, the vendor, right to the uh, USA Inflatables. So the next thing I want to talk about is giveaways. You know, the, uh, a lot of people, what they do is they end up putting a little uh, candy dish out and then people come over and get a candy and then they walk away. <laughs> because the, the candy is inviting and everything, but is it relevant to the product or the business or whatever you're trying to sell? So the giveaway should be relevant. And you might want to have a couple different types of giveaways. Like you've got giveaways for just people that want to take stuff because there's a lot of that. They think it's like Halloween for adults, <laughs> trick or treat. And you might want to have a higher caliber thing for people that have, you know, went through the qualification process and know that they're a possible customer. So what uh, my friend Ron Eccles used to talk about was you have two different types of pens that you're giving away. You've got the, the lower type of pen that's just the imprinted thing and the clicky thing, whatever. And you can give those to other people for getting your brand recognition out there. Then you might have a little higher level of pen that uh, still might have your logo on it, everything. And you might give that giveaway to somebody that's been qualified and, and appreciated, and you know that they might be a customer and be doing business with you. So that's the element of the giveaways. And if, uh, if any of you tuned in late, I've got this video that I'm gonna be making available if you want it, I can send that to you, I'll put it up on YouTube. And I've got this PDF that you see on the screen right here that I can send to you and that's available to you if you want that. 
So getting back into the next level here is the graphics. So graphics. Here's a little statistic that's been around for quite a while because people are at shows, they're buzzing by. The studies have shown that you got about seven to 10, 10 seconds to capture their attention. So when they're walking through a show, you need to have something that's going to stop them. I, I used to call it like a, like a speed bump. <laughs> that slows them down a little bit. So your graphic needs to be eye-catching. And like we did a show once and uh, the, the backdrop was nothing but chocolate chip cookies. There, we were doing a survey. So it really had nothing to do with the product, but our goal was to get people to stop. And they stopped, they saw all the cookies, and we had the, some, some cookies in a little, little hot oven, so it was creating that smell going on. And with that, sometimes you gotta get permission from the venue. They don't allow you to have you know, food and staying, things like that, unless you're a caterer. So you need to get that straight. But anyways, we had the little cookies there, and that stopped people, and that gave us the opportunity to check them out and ask the question and start the conversation going. Um, another thing with graphics is if you're familiar with the uh, vacking, which is visual auditory kinesthetic, it matters whether a graphic is high on your display or whether it's low on your display. Because when people are looking up, they're more in a decision-making process. They're kind of thinking, gee, I wonder if I should do this or not. When they're looking down, they're more in a decision, uh, what did I say? When they're looking up, they're just thinking about it. When they're looking down, they're, they're in a decision-making process. So your graphics might be relevant to that as far as where, where you place them on your, your display. So now we're getting into the product. So oftentimes uh, people don't know what the product actually is. They come to the trade show and they see a booth and the graphics and the stuff that's on the table, the flowers and all that, it might not be relevant to what the product is. So it's probably a good idea to actually have the product in the booth if you're able to do that, if it's, if it's that kind of product. Like if you're a photographer, you might have you know, a camera stood up there with, uh, with some lighting and a, on a tripod, and you can see that that's probably what they do is they're a photographer. So you gotta have the product that's relevant to it. Um, if you're an event venue, you might have big pictures of your venue and pictures of people at in the different rooms and maybe you use it for conferences or weddings and have pictures of the product so that it's relevant to it rather than just you know, not having the, the relevant stuff up there. So the prospects, custom tailored events and trade shows give a company very targeted but small window to reach prospective prospects. So when you're going to a show, sometimes people think, I want more people, like go to the Minnesota State Fair because there's a lot of people. Well, that's not always good. Um, sometimes there's, I mean, the state fair is long enough, so you got a chance to reach and meet a lot of people and there's a lot of point of purchase sales that a person might make. But sometimes if there's too many people, it's overwhelming and your, your ideal client gets saturated in this sea of, of a lot of people. Whereas if you got a, a narrow specific show, like a bridal show, and you know the people that are coming are brides, you're very, very, it's very, very niched vertical. So you wanna do some of that thinking before you get into uh, the show. Let me look this over a little bit. Okay, as far as the uh, uh, prospects again, what you can do before you even exhibit in a show, you can find out, okay, you get an approximation of how many people came to the show. Because usually a show producer will know who showed up last year and it's, it's variable. You never know sometimes if it rains or tornado or earthquake or whatever. But last year at the Event Expo, we had about 700 people come through. So if you're doing that, you can do the math and say, okay, how, how, I got four hours to talk to people and a conversation is gonna be three to five minutes. You can do the math and figure out how many people can I talk to in a four hour window and uh, be able to create a return on my investment because it's, you know, it's a thousand dollars for the booth and I got to pay this much for staffing and it costs this much to uh, provide literature. You can do the math to it and find out maybe you shouldn't even go to that show. 
maybe the people aren't qualified enough to, uh, to buy your product or service. So you can do it in advance and figure out, is this the right show? Are, the, are, are these the right prospects to, uh, is this the right show with the right prospects in it? So next, show guidelines. This is something that a lot of people don't really pay attention to oftentimes because they get overwhelmed. They don't look through the event show materials and find out stuff like you can't bring food because you gotta have a food permit or you're not supposed to have inflatable balloons because there's rules against that in the convention center. Or like at, at my show, if you've got a tabletop display, we don't want you putting up a big back wall and blocking the, the view of everybody. So we ask people to keep stuff down low, below eye level, or one of those small banners, you know, something wispy like a tripod or easel. Don't put up a big back wall and block the view. So there's, the show producer has rules and things that you need to abide by. And sometimes people just assume that electricity is available. It's not necessarily available. Oftentimes it's a profit center for the venue and they charge you to plug in. So like at the event expo at Earl Brown, I think it's a hundred bucks if you get it in advance and 150 bucks if you get it day of. So you need to know these things. And even like in Chicago, when you get into the unions and stuff, they don't even allow you to plug in your stuff. They have a union guy for that. <laughs> So let me reduce this a little bit and get it back up on the top. Follow up. There we go, follow up. Follow up is important. A lot of people don't pay attention to following up on the leads that they, that they get. When they go to a show, they talk to a bunch of people, they collect a bunch of cards, then they go and they enter them into a database and start emailing them stuff you might want to go further than that. My friend Ron taught me, my, my trade show mentor, he taught me that you use a, a qualification pad. So when you're talking to the people, it's a third sheet, like eight and a half by 11 cut in thirds, a third sheet uh, like this, third sheet uh, form that you can answer all the key questions that you need. And it gets a lot more information than just a business card. So you can ask them questions. Do you have an event coming up in the next three to six months? Yes, you do. Um, how many people attend your event? Well, 5,000. I know they got a bigger budget. Where is your event? Is it at uh, VFW or is it at the uh, country club? Now you know they got a bigger budget. So you can get all that information and collect that information in advance. And then those are your follow up slips rather than just a handful of business cards that don't have any data. So you want to do that follow up and put them into a CRM or a customer, re or a customer response. Response. I forgot what that stands for. <laughs> CRM, management, customer response management, customer relationship management. You want to put them into that and, and put that data in there so you know what you're talking about when you're talking to them about, you know, how many kids you got and do you have, did you go up to the cabin this summer? You can put all those little notes in there and you have that information. So when you do follow up with them, you've got that information to follow back on rather than just starting from scratch again. Because if you just want business cards, I've got business cards. <laughs> you get them all the time at those networking events. You wanna get qualified information for your follow-up. And last but not least, it's the evaluation. And you know what evaluation is, it'll blow this thing up a little bit. You want to evaluate how did this show go and how can we improve it? You know, a lot of people, um, they just do the show and then, like I said, they just throw the cards in the desk or put them in a database and they go on to the next task. But you want to kind of evaluate what worked, what didn't. Um, are there things we need to make sure that we don't do like uh, we needed electricity and didn't have it? Um, did the place have Wi-Fi? Do we have internet access? Um, all these little things that, that didn't go right, you want to make little notes of those and evaluate how did the show go? Anyways, that's pretty much it. That's about all I've got for you. And like I said, I've got this document. If you want this document, I've got that available for you. So I'm gonna stop the screen share and come on back. There you have it. So, can you see me now? I'm not sure. Ah, 
technology. Sometimes this stuff is weird. Anyways, I'm over here. <laughs> so that's all I've got for now. I'm going to turn this off and then uh, save the recording. I'll beam it up to the YouTube internet. And then if you want it, um, just let me know and I will shoot it off to you. Okay. Peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. I've got a bunch more of these documents too, and I, I plan on doing more of these. If you if you like this, let me know and I'll do more. Okie doke. Thank you. That's it. Peace.